Hello everyone, as um, many of you will already know, um, legendary artist Oliver Frey very sadly passed away last Sunday, August 21st. Oliver created stunning artwork for many publications, which obviously include Crash and Zap Magazine, Antics, which many of us read when we were growing up as kids. And um, it really touched us all. And Oliver was very, very important to us, wasn't he? He was. So we worked very closely with him on all of our front covers for our films that we did through Kickstarter for the From Bedrooms to Billions front cover, the Amiga years and the PlayStation Revolution. Many are dotted around behind us and also the review of portraits uh, he did of myself my, my and, head's blocking and Anthony there. Um, and we just absolutely adored all of his artwork and we're so privileged to be able to work with him and have him work with us on our films. So we put together some unseen footage uh, of Ollie from when we were making the original From Bedrooms to Billions uh, from a shoot in 2013, which was a really, really fun day actually. We spent the whole day there. And um, it, of, of Ollie talking about the process of, of, of creating those covers and the reason behind, behind some of them. And keep watching to the very end because uh, there's a little outtake in there which we couldn't resist no, putting in there because really he nice. has such a wonderful smile and such a nice chap. And we, he is going to be so missed. Yeah, very sorely missed. Anyway, we'll get out of the way and uh, we'll hand over to Oliver Frey. I think art was terribly important to the burgeoning video games industry because given the fact that the, the actual pixels and the moving sprites didn't live up to whatever the game's title was at all, you needed art to create the make-believe the same way as you do with movies, although with movies you end up in the cinema and you do see the proper thing. With games you had to get the atmosphere across and what in the player's mind was the game. So little blob here was actually Indiana Jones or whatever. I think that governed my entire work with Crash and subsequently to a degree with computer games covers that I've done is you have to create the world for the gamer to imagine. Well, in those days, yes, covers were hand-painted one way or the other. I mean, there was the use of the airbrush for backgrounds and sometimes for little highlights. But it usually started off with me anyway. I mean, I used to do a little pencil rough about this size, minuscule, which no one else could really understand. I did quite a lot of them and then I picked the one that seemed to me to have the right dynamic. Then you'd work it up bigger and in the end you'd do it full size, which often was twice up, and then later they became smaller. Then you start inking the outlines, spray the background, and then ink in the rest with paintbrush until it was deemed finished. Or I was told that it better be finished. Well, usually the editor had a decision, I mean, like Roger initially, and then subsequent editors they, on the whole, decided what they wanted on the cover, what game or what theme. I'd then provide a sort of pencil rough that they could understand and they'd tweak, tweak around there if they wanted to. But once that was agreed, then it was left to me. And they either liked it or they didn't at the end. But by then it would have been too late because it would have had to go off to be scanned. Well, the first time, I suppose one started noticing that the covers were popular because one got letters from the readers saying where they mentioned maybe by the by great cover and this and that and the next is when um, we went to these computer game shows like PCW show where the people wanted signatures which meant they obviously liked what I did but I think that was about it really I mean oddly enough one learns many years later much more what effect these covers had on people when they suddenly out of the blue you get an email or or a mention on Facebook that oh it changed their lives or something and God knows why but it did. So you notice maybe you had more effect than you ever thought. People always ask me the question <laughs> which covers am I most proud of, which ones do I like most. The truth is apart unequivocally apart from the first one because it is the first crash cover there were so many others that I liked and I know there's quite a few between those where I was disappointed. I mean, they did their job and maybe it's only me who notices could have been better.
time or, <laughs> or something. something or inspiration sometimes you just don't get turned on by a game or or whatever the editor wants and you struggle hard to try and get the image across and as punchy as is possible but I was never very good at the humorous ones. I was definitely carried along by the enthusiasm for the games. I mean, once Crash was established, for example, then you worried a lot less about whether the cover was good or bad. You were sort of carried along on a wave. Um, well, because yes, the reviewers and the readers who wrote in, they were all enthusiastic. So you suddenly felt part of this exciting new thing. And to me, it was ex exciting because I'd always wanted to make movies and I didn't. But this was felt a bit like that, being part of a whole new segment of entertainment. Well, forget the old fossil bit, maybe. Maybe they wanted someone who was well known at the time and is still well known for it to produce the poster. But it's still an old fossil. You broke, <laughs> you broke the fourth wall the whole time during that bit. Like you looked straight into the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Norma Desmond. No, no, no. Um, stop filming. <laughs>